good everyone welcome back to the channel on today's video but today's video is my first impression of mizuno's up tempo daily trainer definitely up tempo the wave rebellion and i gotta be honest with you out of all shoes in mizuno's lineup i was most excited to try the wave rebellion it's fairly light pretty quick and i guess i'll just come right out and say it that it works pretty well for running fast. Maybe not a race day shoe, but definitely intervals, definitely tempo work. I have taken this shoe out on a tempo run. Well, there was a lot of warming up and cooling down, but I warmed up, I ran five miles at tempo, and then I cooled down for a couple more miles. Ultimately, that entire run was just about the tempo part, because I wanted to see how this shoe held up at speed over time. I was pretty impressed. Let's talk about price. Price is usually the first thing I talk about just because it's, uh, it's a big deal. It really can separate the shoe that we want to buy, but don't from a shoe that we want to buy, but do. And the way for Brilliant, retails at $180 here in the US or £180 in the UK. However, I did do a quick search and I found the Wave Rebellion on sale in the Uk £406. Don't know how reliable that is, probably just one size, they probably have one of them left, but there we go. There are deals out there. But with that said, I think $180 is the right price point for this shoe. It fits right in line with other up-tempo speedy shoes like the Puma DV8 Nitro, the Reebok Floatrate Energy X, maybe the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2, although that is just a little cheaper, but all in all, we're in the right ballpark. Wave Rebellion has an eight millimeter drop. It also has a pretty good stack height for a up-tempo shoe. We have 36 in the heel and 28 millimeters in the forefoot. Mizuno claims that a men's US size nine tips the scale at 8.8 .8 ounces or 249 grams. However, in my size, US men's size 13, it gets a little heavier at 10.7 ounces or 303 grams. And while there are lighter shoes out there, it is certainly not heavy. It feels very light in my hands. It feels very nimble on my feet. It is a neutral trainer. However, it is a stable neutral trainer. And that is mainly due to the wave plate that runs from the heel almost up to your toes that creates a very stable platform so if you're on the edge of a neutral stability shoe the wave rebellion could be something to take a look at but we're going to get more into the wave plate in just a second because there are some pretty sensational numbers attached to it first of all can we talk about this colorway for a second because i think this is absolutely beautiful it is the princess blue paradise pink colorway i think this 3d sublimated logo their running bird logo is absolutely beautiful on this shoe but a shoe has to be more than just form it's got to function pretty well too right let's get into some of the details of the shoe and how it fits and how it felt on the run as always we are going to start at the top we're going to work our way down so let's start with the heel collar and you can see already that for an up-tempo shoe you might be thinking that's a lot of padding around that heel collar and it is it's definitely not that lightweight kind of one ply material that you get in some other shoes there is a lot of padding and while the extra padding may contribute to this shoe being just a little heavier than its competitors it also ensures a very comfortable fit around your ankle i didn't experience any heels and it was just a real treat to slide the ball of my foot into this pocket the heel counter again is very rigid there is a lot of structure to the shoe again in some other up-tempo trainers you're going to see it's all like a mishmash in the back this is very structured and if i squeeze i can actually feel that plastic plate in the heel counter around the back the upper is a one piece engineered mesh and it feels very good against my foot but there is one part of it that i didn't like now although this shoe does fit true to size it fit me everywhere i thought i had to cinch the laces down a little bit more than i ordinarily would especially in some other shoes even compared with some other mizuno shoes so i don't know how close you can see right now but these laces they're pretty close together and I took these off after my run today and I didn't widen them out I wanted to show you on camera just how tight I had to cinch the laces in order to get a good lockdown across the top of my foot now, although I did get a good lockdown across the top of my foot there was no movement of my foot within the shoe it just looks a little a little close and we can see a little puckering down here because I'm pulling those laces so tight together however maybe that is just a little picky the shoes felt really good on my foot when I was out on the run and aside from looking at it when I tied my laces and pulled everything tight I never thought about it again. But other than that, we've got good lockdown in the heel, nice lockdown across the front, even though the laces are a little tight together, and the toe box was pretty roomy. I didn't feel my little toe on the outside of the shoe, which for me is a sign that the shoes are just a bit narrow in the toe box. So overall, very impressed with how this shoe fit around my foot. The tongue is fairly typical for an up-tempo trainer. It is like super thin, super razor thin, but you know what? does the job. The tongue is gusseted, so it's not going to be sliding around all over the place. And even though it is super thin, which I'm glad to see because it saves weight, it did provide a nice barrier between the laces and the top of my foot. I didn't get any pinching across the laces. Now we come down to the midsole. And this is where Mizuno has done something pretty good. And they are using
using the Energy Light phone. It is a PBAX phone and it is extremely light and pretty responsive. Now cushion between two layers of the Energy Light phone is the wave plate. And this is an environmentally friendly wave plate. It is bio-based, it's made of castor beans, nylon, and reinforced with glass fiber. And the wave plate is kind of like a lobster claw. It runs from back here and it comes up to the front and this little gray piece in the middle, that is the exposed part of the wave plate. But if we look at the bottom of the shoe, I'm not sure how well you can see. I'm looking at the screen now. Actually, you can see pretty well the, the lobster claw of the wave plate. It starts out full down here and then it comes up and then this is the shorter end of the claw. And then on this side where my big toe is up here, it extends forward just a little longer. You can kind of see the, the gray underneath the outsole. Pretty cool. We're gonna talk more about this outsole in just a second because I think that is a thing of beauty too. What a color. So here are the exciting numbers about this outsole and wave plate combination. The Energy Light foam features a 22% increase in cushioning and a 35% increase in responsiveness. This wave plate that you can get a glimpse of right here, this glass fiber reinforced plate, it has 1,141% more snap than a regular PBAX plate. And whenever you can put percentages like that on your spec sheet, pretty good, I'm listening. Of course, whatever they are comparing it to in the past, I haven't run with that shoe, so I really can't notice the 1,141% increase in snappiness, but I feel comfortable just knowing it's there underfoot. Now it's time to talk about this beautiful pink outsole. Now, technically this is a micro inject outsole. It's made of a PU resin and that just means that the resin is injected into the fabric and then it's laid over the midsole. And if you look, you can actually see the fibers of the fabric in between the little teeth, in between the little lugs. But either way, this outsole does create phenomenal grip. I mean, it looks like it would create a lot of grip. And when you like put your hands on it, it actually feels very grippy. I was running through some wet spots and I was trying to like scuff my feet to see if I could get them to slide. No dice. This is an extremely grippy shoe. But grippiness, grippiness is all well and good. But you know what I see here? I see a lot of outsole rubber. Outsole rubber, pretty heavy. Even though we've got this giant cutout and the little window where we can see the gloss fiber wave plate, I think there is still room to reduce some weight by reducing some of the outsole rubber. I think we can also lose a little bit of padding around the heel collar. That will also save a bit of weight. But I'm sure the Mizuno engineers know exactly what they're talking about. Now that we've talked about the shoe and how it fits and what goes into it and the numbers behind all the technology, let's talk about how this shoe performed on the run. And the wave and actually performed very well. It was a little surprising when I first started running because it is a very firm ride. A lot firmer than I expected from just feeling this shoe, kind of pressing it. Of course, that doesn't prove anything. But when I actually started running, it was surprisingly firm. Now that firmness actually turns out to be a very good thing when you start picking up the pace. You get a good road feel underfoot and that firmness just makes the responsiveness kind of jump out at you. If you're running in a squishy shoe, you're kind of sucked into the ground. This shoe feels like all the energy is coming back to your foot. So I already said it earlier in the video, but I don't think this is a race day shoe. I just think it's just a tad too heavy. However, this definitely has room in your lineup for those faster days. For those days when you want to go out, you want to run a fartlek workout, you're going to be doing intervals, you're going to be doing a tempo run. And guys, we have to be running at least one or two of that type of workout a week if we really want to see gains. So there's definitely room for this shoe in your lineup. If you are already a fan of Mizuno, then hands down, this is your tempo day shoe. But I also think that this is a great contender against the Reebok Floatrite Energy X and those other shoes that I mentioned earlier. In fact, I'm looking forward to testing this against the new Reebok Floatrite Energy X. Stay tuned to the channel for that video. Now, while I said this is not a race day shoe, that is taken into account that there are so many other shoes out there that are probably a little better for race day. But the thing is, is that those race day shoes are quite a bit more expensive. So if we take those super shoes out of the equation, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion could definitely be used for race day. Personally, I would probably use this shoe for any race up to a half marathon. It's just a little too firm for me to run a whole marathon in it. I do prefer a bit of squish when I'm running for that long. But other than that, I think the Wave Rebellion is money well spent. And I think that Mizuno has left enough room for improvement that the next iteration is going to be pretty fantastic. All right, guys, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you have tried the Wave Rebellion and let me know if you're thinking about picking it up. $180, it's expensive, but still a good deal. All right, my friends, be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.